Hey guys, it's Amanda. I've had a few messages saying that I should do some more reaction videos. So going forward, I'm adding them to my weekly roster. So welcome to the first ever Reaction Thursday. Today's reaction video should be interesting. It's 21 US things that puzzle foreigners. I can only imagine what's on this list. So let's get straight into it. Well, you may have lived in the United States your whole life without realizing that something totally normal for you seems bizarre Some pretty jazzy to people from other parts of the world. To start us off. Who knew that munching on fried pickles in a highly oh, air-conditioned so room good. was I so good. I haven't had them in so long. Well, here are some other highly entertaining Americanisms I've gathered. Let's count it down from number 21. Sales tax is a guessing game. When you go shopping in the U.S. and see a price tag that says $14.88, don't expect to pay $14.88 oh, at the register. I forgot register. about that. That is Sales quite annoying. Sales tax is not included in the price of an item. And since this tax can vary from state to state, figuring out your total can turn into the ultimate mental math challenge. In many European countries, the sales tax is already included in the price. It's known as a value-added tax, Which is much or easier. VAT. Yeah, like you said, it does vary from state to state. And I guess if you are a stranger to America, it can be quite confusing when you're looking at the price tag, seeing one number, and then going up to pay at the counter and you're hit with a completely different price. Interestingly enough, before we moved to England, we lived in Jersey, the Channel Islands, and some of the stores there didn't show the tax on their price tags. Not everywhere, but some of the places. Number 20, we're total workaholics. A lot of Americans don't feel the need to take long vacations, so they often let vacation and sick hours pile up without ever using them. That's not strictly true. It's not that we don't want to take leave. It's that we don't always have it to take. In the case, some companies, you have to work for, for, for X amount of time before you get two weeks holiday, if any. I've had jobs in the States where I would start off getting like five days holiday per year, so you definitely had to work there for quite a while to work your way up to that two weeks. Plus, most employers only give you two weeks out of the year. But in a lot of other countries, like Brazil or Finland, workers are encouraged to take an average of 30 days of vacay. 30 days, wow. that's amazing. Maybe I should take some time off. Or perhaps but is I'll that just 30 days including their bank holidays? Because wouldn't that be the same as in the UK? 19. It's not a party without red solo cups. In the States, this red plastic cup is synonymous with party on, dude. But other Every countries party. apparently don't recognize this cup to mean the same thing. And as silly as this People is, it UK, is 100% true. Don't use red solo cups at get togethers. They have to go to a special website to purchase the cups for American theme parties. Hmm. Who knew? Number 18 Deep fried everything. Whether it's fried pickles or even fried or No judging, but fried pickles and fried Oreos are delicious. Yes, everyone knows they're incredibly unhealthy, but they just taste so good. Oreos. America has it all. Fried fish recipes first appeared in Spanish and Portuguese cookbooks as far back as the 1200s, and the Greeks were frying food in olive oil way back in the 5th century BCE. But as America does with many things, they've adopted a tradition from far off lands and took it up a notch, or five. 17. Get everything you need right at the pharmacy. If you're not from the U.S., it may be puzzling to walk into a pharmacy and see aisles and aisles of over-the-counter meds, toys, makeup, clothes, and even groceries. Unlike in other countries where pharmacies sell medicine and medical supplies exclusively, the ones in the U.S. are like small convenience stores where you can grab magazines, Tylenol, and a frozen pizza in one fell swoop. That's not exactly true. In some large chains, you will get that. But isn't that the same as boots in this country? Just the same as here, you do get small pharmacies that only sell drugs. So that one is slightly misleading. 16. Fill her up. In America, if a restaurant doesn't offer free refills on fountain drinks, 
It's kind of strange. They are expected everywhere countries, you go. Once you buy one beverage, that's it. France banned refills on sugary sodas back in 2017 in order to combat the current obesity epidemic. But in the U.S., the idea of free refills is still alive and well. 15. Although it was quite weird for me when I first came here to not have that as a service, I do actually agree with it because, man, do they hammer down those sugary drinks. So I guess it is better to eliminate it one per person. Unless, of course, you want to pay for it. Although, in most places in the States, with breakfast, you do get free coffee refills, which I think is great. 15. If you don't like it, return it. Whether it's an ugly sweater from grandma or a heinous pair of earrings from an ex, if you don't like it, you can just return it. In America, making returns at stores is pretty normal. And super well, easy. you can here too. I you mean, just the US even you have two weeks providing it's not damaged and you have the receipt. Conveniently help for you to return holiday gifts you weren't too thrilled about. 14. Tips for everyone. Cab drivers, servers, hairdressers, you gotta tip them. Time. Tips are acceptable for almost any service in the U.S. and sometimes consist of 25% of the bill. We haven't started tipping surgeons yet. There's but still there time. are places in other parts of the world, such as Japan, that consider tipping incredibly rude, like in restaurants. When you travel to different countries, it's important to learn their tipping etiquette so that you don't offend anyone. That is pretty standard to us, but I think what people need to understand is that certain jobs, such as waitressing, don't earn minimum wage, so they rely heavily on tips for their living. 13. I'll take my coffee to go. With a Starbucks on every corner, it's very normal to see people toting around a coffee as they shop, commute to work, and whatever else at all times we of the all day. Do that. But in many parts of the world, coffee is meant to be sipped on while seated and enjoying the paper or chatting with friends. Tugging your coffee along with you throughout the day might be due to the fact that the cups are huge and take longer to drink. Who's got that kind of time to be sitting in a cafe for hours? Sounds like fun to me. I think that's a really stupid one to have in. If you look around England, there's always people walking around with coffees or teas or, or whatever. <laughs> But in regards to a Starbucks on every single corner, if you've ever been to New York City, you know that is 100% true. Number 12. The land of ice cold drinks. Now speaking of drinks, if it's not a hot coffee or cocoa, then it's probably got ice in it. Tea, coffee, lemonade, soda, water. Americans like it on the rocks. If you go elsewhere in the world, odds are you'll be sipping your soda at room temperature or maybe slightly refrigerated. That's actually true and something that does really annoy me here. I go, through, I go through loads of ice even at home. <laughs> Number 11. Keeping the AC on at all times. Americans must have an aversion to being hot. In many parts of Europe, people simply don't use air conditioning as much as they do in the States. Here, well, that obviously depends on where you are in the AC states, blaring. as the climate varies so much depending where you live. Strange and quite chilly, but come on, it makes sense. If you're cold, you can layer up. If you're hot, all you can do is suffer and complain about it. You wouldn't think it's strange if you're in places like Texas, where it's so hot, you'd literally be praying for everywhere you went to have AC on. Number ten, looking at dollars is a snooze fest. I remember going to Europe for the first time and thinking their banknotes look like Monopoly money. And I guess a lot of countries have bills of different colors and sizes depending on the value, yeah, guess like just Swedish personal krona I guess. and Russian rubles. But not in the US. It's all greenbacks, baby. Sure, tens look a little yellowy, fifties are kind of pinkish, and Benjamins seem bluer than the others. But I guess it does but help still, having different US colors. Obviously, it's easier to get out as fun the money. And isn't it? as it's not as confusing. Currencies. Number 9. Giving a thumbs up. In America, even little kids know a thumbs up means good job, way to go, or anything positive like that. But if you travel to Greece or the Middle East and give this common American gesture, you probably won't make too many friends. Hey, how about giving this video a thumbs up for the useful tip? Is that right? <laughs> Number 8. The Date Writing Conundrum. So many visitors to the U.S. get really confused by the month, day, year thing. I still write the day wrong. Because most parts of the world write the day, then the month, then finally the year. 
There's no clear historical reason why the U.S. insists on writing the day differently, but we just do. Me and my husband will never agree on this. I think the American way is so right, and he absolutely hates it. He's actually quite passionate about the way we write the date. Number seven, pre-baby baby showers. Many cultures celebrate a new baby coming into the world, but America is one of the few places that does this before the baby actually gets here. In East Asian oh, countries, they're for huge. Instance, Everyone has celebrations one. for a new baby are held once the baby is born, as doing otherwise is seen as bad luck. Number six where how are you means hello. Sure, people ask each other how they're doing in other countries, but Americans often use this phrase as a replacement for hey or hello. It doesn't even require yeah, a real that response. Is very true. People just answer Over with here, it's fine just, thanks, all right. even if they're in a horrible mood or had a terrible day. Number five, bathroom stalls that aren't so private. Hmm, don't like doing your business in front of complete strangers? Americans don't either, of course, but the fact that bathroom stall doors often reveal as much as your entire lower leg seems to say otherwise. There's no clear reason as to why there's this big gap in public bathroom stalls here, but many guess it's for safety reasons or ventilation. <laughs> Just saying. I never really thought about this, but it is quite weird that half the door is missing. And if slasher films are anything to go by, it's a terrible idea because always someone's getting killed in the bathroom. Number four, no one uses their inside voice. A lot of my friends who are visiting or moved to the U.S. tell me that locals speak so loud compared to other countries. Whether it's talking on your cell phone or chatting with a friend over lunch, Americans seem to really like projecting their voice. I don't know. Maybe we just want to make sure we're heard. As generalizations go, this one is probably true, but hopefully for my English viewers, I am a little bit more soft-spoken. Number three, it's all about choices. Walk into any grocery store aisle and you'll notice at least 10 different options for cookies, crackers, or cereal. People in the UK don't have these many options for food and you'll almost never find anything in grape flavor there. Number two, all right, so you don't have great flavored stuff, but you have loads of food options. That's just a really weird one. Hopping into the back seat of a cab. When getting into a cab, it's customary in the States to scoot on into the back seat. But in countries like New Zealand and Australia, riding anywhere but shotgun can be a little rude. That's a bit awkward. What if you just didn't want to talk to him? Number one, that classic American smile. In the U.S., people aren't afraid to be nice and show their pearly whites all the time. And according to a 2015 study at Brown University, because America has always been a very diverse country, it forced people to smile at each other more since they couldn't always communicate with sure, language. That's not a bad thing, is it? It's just one more historical theory as to why Americans tend to smile more than people in other places do. Or maybe we're just, you know, friendlier. Whether you're from the U.S. or not, can you add any... This can actually be wrapped up with the fact that Americans are loud. It's just another stereotype of our personalities. But having lived in England for quite a while now, I don't think Americans are any nice or any more friendly than, than English people, or vice versa. Hopefully, no matter where you are, if you say hello to someone, they would say hello back. <laughs> and if not, maybe you should just move to a different neighborhood. Yeah, a lot of those were true, but some of those were a bit misleading and not all that puzzling. If there's any other videos you'd like me to react to, make sure you leave them in the comments below or head over to my Instagram and say hello. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, smash that like button if that's what you're into, and I'll see you in the next video.